Hello, I just randomly, sporadically decided to make a short video since I was uh, going through my cabinets. Um, usually when I show these, it's not bright enough. So I thought since I have some lamps on and everything, um, I could give you guys a much brighter, more visible tour than um, all of the ones that I've ever done in the past. So, um, I'm trying to organize things so they're more, um, you know, like in my mind anyway, that all the pieces on each shelf are connected in some kind of a way to each other and stuff like that. And, um, I was tired of having my crystals all in a box, so I wanted to put them in the display cabinets on the ends. Um, so this one used to be just traditionally, uh, Samhain kind of stuff. Mostly just only the once a year, but um, what I've done is I've organized them uh, kind of according to shelf. So obviously down here is Yule time, um, except for the, you know, I just kind of put this to be pretty, but it's just the smaller um, of my stones and crystals and stuff like that. My Yule log is in the back, and I have uh, this thing. And I also have, um, this might seem weird at first, but it goes to the guy from the Rudolph movie from the 70s. Uh, the guy who wants to be a dentist, the little elf. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so. And this guy was handed down several generations. His name's Seth, and he plays music. Oh, somebody just crashed something upstairs. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning over here, so... I always do things at weird odd hours of the day and night. <laughs> well, most of the night, I guess. Um, and I have certain uh, gems on certain levels for reasons. Uh, I have all the turtles and frogs and toads on this um, particular. And so on this level, I have um, stuff to do with um, leprechauns and March kind of time period like uh, pre-spring but end of winter time but I also have the frogs and the turtles mixed in because this is all kind of like animal animals that are special to me like my totem kind of animals and then I have some um, personal items that are special for other reasons like to do with my life and so I have the bonded animals, and to me it all makes sense, and it all connects. And um, my, these, a couple of these were made, one, two, three, so at least three of these were personally made on this level for me. And then I have an egg back here for um, when it does hit springtime, and we're celebrating the spring and bunnies and all of that, and I got this from the Tooth Fairy when I was little, and I thought she took my tooth and turned it into this because it was shaped like the root. <laughs> In my weird little kid mind, that's really what I thought. And uh, there was a reason. Oh, I know why. Because, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't like rip people's teeth out or anything. Don't, no worries. But these are actually from my children from their teeth. So I'm going to put their baby teeth in here with my little tooth fairy thing from when I was a kid. Oh, I forgot that was in there though. Something was blocking the way. Oh, I didn't even know these were in there. Um, there's little tiny baby fuzzy chicks from Easter time, but these are actually, these were like given to my aunt when she was a kid. So I have like several generations worth of cute little Easter bunny and tooth fairy things. That's, I didn't even realize that was there. And um, so on the Yule level, this belonged to my grandfather's uh, sister, as well as she gifted me that doll. So these are from um, a couple generations ago. And I have some plates that my kids made. This is also an antique, um, an antique Santa. Uh, and my father made me the Yule log. 
so that's a very sentimental special too and then over here my birthday is in the winter this is a special plate that has my name and my birthday and stuff on it um, so a lot of my items although they're not you know expensive or anything you know that most people would put it in a china cabinet like like this um, these are very sentimental for personal reason and you guys understand what that's all about because if you're in a spiritual practice it has to have that type of an energy um, attachment in order for it to work so very important so those of you who are still learning you know nothing that a book is going to teach you is going to really teach you how to do those kinds of things because it's a feeling it really is a once you tap into the feeling that you're supposed to have when you're doing work of this nature it's like discovering electricity you are tapping into something so primal and so um so of the the whole point of creation like when we were made so specifically there are details that even to, to this day with all of the science and all the information we have that they don't understand the little copper bracelet um you know they're learning things now about um that men actually do have a whole thing that goes on uh as far as when they're having a baby with somebody that until now they didn't think men really had much else to do but the sperm but there's actually all kinds of things that change in the man when he has um fertilized the egg he actually senses before the woman does um at around four weeks post conception and certain um that is that's assuming that they are together you know like a couple and they are together all the time but um i guess certain pheromones get set off and it triggers a response and the man actually uh some of his testosterone will decrease and then this other hormone uh kicks in that so instead of wanting to just keep copulating and reproducing it makes him more want to be protective and f like providing and it's actually nature's way of getting him ready to be a parent to a child and you know these things are so subtle within our our body happening automatically we don't have to do anything we don't even realize it's happening but as it is it it's showing how just amazing the energies that are flowing through us and in us are and that they have such purpose and if you can learn to tap into that and how to actually participate consciously it's just unbelievably amazing just incredible and i remember the things that i did know when i was younger and i, I was you know planning my children and stuff I was very sensitive because, um, you know, I'm already anyway sensitive because I'm uh, just that way. I feel everything. I tend to know things about people that, you know, I otherwise kind of might not like to know. Um, and, it, you know, it can be a challenge. But anyway, um, I've always had that. And uh, so I instantly would feel all kinds of changes immediately in my body and sense and know. I can tell. I could tell when I was uh, sick, when I was pregnant, when I was ovulating, any little detail. And I learned about it. And the more you learn, the more you understand, the more you become aware and conscious, and the more you learn to control your health and be able to um, kind of help your body along. Because there's also been times where my body's signaling me that it's in pain or distress, and I have ignored it. And your body is only trying to help you to stay healthy and alive. And so when we try to uh, suppress feelings like anger or um, anger, uh, communicate unpleasant things, girls tend to not want to be, you know, loud and angry and all that. Men don't want to be sad or emotional or 
moody and um, when we do that we're not uh, meeting our body's needs and our body's only trying to communicate so that we can maintain our health and happiness um, that's why we have to learn to not fight with our bodies and to kind of go with the flow of what we were made for and you know there is a balance I know I have this argument often with people um, who disagree with you know this kind of a practice and they can say they, they think it's a contradiction how can you believe in God but still believe in all of this because I just to me it makes a lot of sense that God made all of this he made it to do this he made it to operate this way he made all of these herbs and um, I have a lot of stuff that I can back it up with biblically and otherwise and uh it's amazing. The more I learn, the more I learn how to do this stuff, the more I, this is my kombucha, by the way. I'm talking and showing you guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, you're looking around as I'm talking my little stuff. But um, the more I learn, just the more it just verifies the fact that I am on, my, on the right path and I've always been meant to be on this path. Since a child, I've always felt that uh, just deep connection. I could feel the changes in the seasons and the changes in the weather. And um, it was part of me. Like, each new spring, I felt it coming. And I knew what was going to happen. And I knew when the um, certain fish would come to the edge of the lake. And um, it's just such a wonderful thing. The other day I found this bird nest lying on the ground. And so it was all in one piece. It's a little bit dirty and muddy, so I kept it in here to kind of dry it out a little. But um, took it home. It wasn't going to be reused. I don't know where it came from, which tree or bush, so I thought I would keep it. I have a little collection of them now. And I shall keep that one too. Oh, I forgot about this. A little, it's like a little kitty that goes on top of a bottle. So um, I'm trying to be more organized and use my tools a little bit better because I tend to put them away somewhere and then forget about them. And then when I'm not using them, I thought if I have them in a nice little display case, it's really cool. And uh, some of these things I do take out and I still do use for ritual. But most of my go-to ritual things are like up here. Most of this stuff is uh, extra candles and things and then sentimental things. Yeah. Um, so the fact that I keep all these really super personal, really emotional, uh, emotionally charged items is that this is my sacred space. I don't let anybody come near here. I don't let the, the people put things in front of it to block the energy flow. I have on my bookcase over here, I have all my um, photograph books from years and years uh, since forever. My, from birth on, all these photos of my life. So I really get into that zone. And that's what this whole thing about having any type of a spiritual practice, sacred space and sacred time, prayer time, meditation time, anything like that, even exercise. Um, some people don't even want to do yoga because they think that they're like worshiping something or... Um, but it's about your mind and how you perceive and you, the energy that you're drawing up and any kind of exercise is putting aside time to put your health and your mind and your spirit in a place of priority and a place of importance that you set aside this time to do that and to breathe in that air and invigorate yourself and to infuse yourself with hormones and endorphins and all of the things that you need to function better. And um, you guys know that I stopped um, a lot of heavy activity um, after I got hit by a car in 2000, was it 2001. 
And I used to, before that, I was very athletic. I was very, I did cardio kickboxing uh, three times a week. And every single day, rain or shine, vacation or not, Thanksgiving, no matter what, freezing weather, blizzards, even when they tell you not to go out because it's too hot, I would jog at least six miles a day, no matter what, <laughs> even at, right after I give birth. So um, that's because that was a priority to me. And um, for the first time recently, I actually, this morning at 5 o'clock in the morning, really wanted to go again. I missed it. Like, in a way, I haven't in a long time. And so I know that the things that I'm doing are working um, because that's a, telling me that my health is saying, wow, yeah, yeah, we like this, we're coming back. Because your body, if anything's wrong or swollen or painful, it's your body telling you that there's something not right. And it's trying to tell you to fix it. And I actually have learned so much about the dangers of what we now call med medical practices or hospitals or medicine or whatever we want to call it basically western medicine um is just so not what we think it is you know and i am i am just starting to discover this and to be horrified about just how not helping us the doctors really are um and it's the more I learn, the more horrifying it is. It's like they're just basically lying to your face and killing you <laughs> um, with poisons and vaccines. And um, I, I, I can very easily see the difference between um, my, my... I've given birth six times, but um, the first three kids were all completely natural. Nothing artificial entered me or at any time during my pregnancies or during the births or anything and um but with one with my fourth child I did I had an epidural and I was on medication at the end of that pregnancy um with all the others I didn't even drink so much as coffee didn't take Tylenol nothing but um with the fourth one my back um, after I had been already been hit by the car and I had already had another child since so this is my second time having a child since getting hit by a car and the pain at that point just really was it was wearing me down and I finally started taking pain medication and stuff and um, even though I really didn't want to um, I did and I had a very different pregnancy a di very different type of birth the first three kids came out First one was like three hours total labor and, and delivery. Uh, second one was very fast. He was born in like an hour. I walked out of the delivery room, still had my makeup on. I was back to jogging by day three. I felt great. I, I could have been one of those people who like is working in the field, pops out the baby and then keeps going. It was like I was that healthy. And so then the third one was another really, really fast. I dilated from four centimeters to 10 in like under 20 minutes. And he came flying out so fast he had, um, he injured his head and had a hematoma and stuff. And it was crazy. The doctor basically, as he was putting his gloves, he, cause everyone ran out of the room. They were so horrified that I had just gone so quickly like that which they thought was impossible and they had to run out of the room and I'm like the baby's coming doctor arrives just in time to catch it but um when I was on the medication I couldn't di I couldn't even handle the pain it was horrible the labor lasted the whole day it started at 11 in the morning and I had those like slowly increasing the ones you hear about and I had never experienced that when I went in labor it was just like hard labor immediately two minutes apart and then I'd push the baby up but um I had whole day labor I got I actually caved in and got the epidural um they gave me Pitocin after and that whole experience everything about it was just horrific and unnatural 
um, you could tell that the poisons and toxins of the medications and the artificial hormones and whatever else is in all those different things, they each and every one of them triggered other responses in my body. You know, eat what one thing that you do triggers another. The the needle of the epidural going in my spine, I'm sure, did all kinds of things emotionally, probably brought back to memory, getting hit by the car and that pain and who knows. But I could I could tell it was a completely different experience. And um to this day I I don't think um even the bonding and and everything it, it was never like the others. And it's so sad. And I wish I had known these things um, way back then so I could have known better. And, and I certainly never would have done any of those things. Even I would have endured <laughs> anything to prevent any kind of harmful effects on my child. Um, and they say when you get an epidural, it, although it um, cuts off the woman's pain because it shuts off certain uh, messages going from your spine to, to tell you tell your body you know that it's having this pain and everything but then the child actually experiences a worse birth because when you're in labor your body's doing all these things with the muscles getting tight and relaxing and um, certain responses where when you push you start to feel that energetic um, something happens it comes over you it's like an energy but with the epidural it's completely different it's like you're almost removed from the whole experience um, you're not as much a part of it and I remember people are so horrified saying you know how could you have had three kids and done it all and, and I would say Oh, it wasn't so bad. It was great. I could do it again. No problem. Because during each of those, yes, the pain is horrific. Worst pain. You can't even, nothing to compare to. It's just indescribable. Um, but you, I could feel every bit of my body doing stuff. I could feel like everything in my being not just my body but my soul and my spirit and everything of who and what i am and its purpose it really felt like you know how the whole um seeking to know if there's a god and who he is and all of that why are we here um what's the point I knew I had a purpose, and I was doing that purpose, like pushing that child and bringing forth life and um, the nursing, the whole thing. It was like my whole body knew what to do, how to do it, and it came out of me in a way that nobody had to tell me or teach me or show me. My body did it all on its own. You couldn't, I couldn't have not done it. <laughs> It's like it would have done it just no matter what. It's like your body takes over you or something. But but there's an emotional whole thing as well, like the mental experience of it. Because you're seeing it, you're sensing it, you're feeling it, and then you're also feeling it like on that in your heart, but not your actual heart feeling like deep. It's amazing. And um, when we medicate ourselves or we go to one doctor for this and one doctor for that, it's like we become like, pu like a puzzle. And we're not supposed to be a puzzle. We're one thing. We are who we are. One person. But, yes, we're connected to the others and, you know, depending how far you want to go with that. But, but um, doctors today don't really uh, do that whole approach. It's more like, okay... What's ailing you? Your shoulder? You go to the shoulder specialist and, you know, they don't see us anymore as a whole being with, if you have mental issues as well or things going on in your home, then they send you to some other doctor, a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I mean, but that's not how things work. It all works together. And um, I just, I'm really pulling together my health and I'm trying to, and it has to work with my spirituality. 
Because if I try to just do it and isolate one or the other, like, oh, let's up up uh, my spirituality, but my health needs to be there too. Because when I'm not healthy, I'm not going to do as good of a job. It's not going to be as successful. Everything has to be all working together like a, a whole. That's, that's the whole point of uh, marriage. I don't know how some people... Um, I, I I see it, and I just, I don't get it, how people live completely separate lives. Like, they hardly even see each other, yet they're married. Like, what's the point? <laughs> I don't get it, but I don't know. They seem kind of happy, I suppose. It must work somehow, but it's kind of, I don't know. I like the whole family bound together, like movie night or whatever. I've always been kind of old school in that way. I guess that's why I'm an old school witch. I like the traditional kind of things. Um, I don't know, I'm just up late. Thought I would show you guys in the bright daylight so you could see all my stuff. I don't think I missed too much. I'm sorry I didn't describe everything and tell you all about it, but you've probably seen all that a million times. Um, I have my kids over here. This was um, a 3D ultrasound. That was my fourth child. And then in here, ooh, these are like blasts from the past. <laughs> this is a dreadlock from my best friend of, from, he was my best friend like through high school and college and stuff until he moved to California. And it was a little one hitter pipe that he had um, had woven into his dreadlocks. And when he cut them all off, I kept that. And I have a couple of those special things, but I'm not going to show you. Yeah. Um, so this energy and this whole cohesiveness of being a person, like a body, a soul, a spirit, and using all of it, all of your... Because you have um, energy from your body, but you also have energy from your soul and your spirit and when you bind them all together and they're all working together in harmony for one purpose all united all in agreement and not fighting each other because that's the whole thing most people have disharmony some kind of disharmony and it's usually either in the body or it's something repressed, buried, a trauma from long ago, something about rela a relationship, harboring guilt, uh, guilt or unforgiveness or whatever it may be. But these unresolved things will um, hinder that harmony and you'll have a less successful spiritual practice. And so um, you got to kind of try to make sure everything's like all in an even even level, working in harmony. And of course, there's um, ups and downs and ebbs and flows, just like a season, you know. Um, and that, for me, my body and my whole thing seems to kind of wax and wane with the moon. And it's supposed to. <laughs> and I notice that my um, activity levels do the same thing, along with the seasons. And I think that's meant to, too. Um, in the old, old days, like way before electricity and everything, women used to, um, when they were together, they would ovulate together, they would um, have their periods at the same time, and it wasn't just that whole, like, you know, because you're nearby or whatever, there was actually a biological purpose that if one or the other died, they would be able they would both have delivered babies at the same time. They'd both have kids the same ages and everything. And so one mother could easily take over to nurse um, one of the children. And uh, sad but true. And uh, there's also another function where uh, girls would uh, start menstruation much earlier if their father died um, because it would allow them to be able to be married much earlier. And for survival purposes, that also was a little, um, it's kind of like a little, um, what do you call that? <laughs> like a backup plan that is put into our biological bodies and how we are 
uh, like in case of error. So that's why, um, you know, I don't always buy into the whole DNA thing, like it's some set in stone thing, because our DNA has other little elements in there that um, we're not, science hasn't quite caught up with in fully understanding. But there's, there's starting to be um, some research done on things like when people who have lived through depression the depression or a famine or some big trauma like 9-11 that there's an imprint on the fetus and even um, I just learned yesterday in fact that um, when we have intercourse with a partner that a tiny bit of their DNA is imprinted um, in our bodies and I think that also has something to do um, with the HPV virus because um, in the old days there was evidence that people with multiple partners tended to have it um, more than anybody, like somebody who only had one. And um, I guess there's a purpose for that, like your body is supposed to remember and sense and be able to recognize your, you know, the scent and the whole feel and whatever of your partner. But um, it also uh, would imprint a little piece of DNA and it stays within you, within, I don't know if it's just your uterus, but um, it might even be your whole body. And so people who have um, many partners, I don't know, I don't know what it does, you probably have a bunch of, I don't know, it's, it's very confusing when they went into too many details, but um, apparently there's a reason because it um, causes that thing to happen in the um, the male that causes him to stay with the woman. Because if it doesn't happen, like uh, if people are on that, uh, what do you call it, uh, where it makes you stop producing the hormones basically to have children, um, that the man doesn't get that permanency feeling. So, yeah, I'm getting tired now. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm babbling. <laughs> I'll have to rewatch the video because I explained it like shit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but it was really cool. Um, maybe I should tell you guys what the video was called. It was really interesting. Um, it was talking about how things that happen get imprinted and passed along to uh, the next generation and the one after. Um, like high anxiety and high uh, obesity in the people who had gone through the famine. And uh, there was a reason, because your body thinks there may be a famine again. So anyway, guys, sorry my video is so long. I'm so tired, and I had the 4th of July from hell. I will definitely have to make another video tomorrow or something and tell you guys the, all the stuff that happened, because you're not even going to believe it. It was so hilarious, but not. it was not funny to me at all. I was raging. It was just a... It couldn't have been more hor horrifically disastrous. So, blessed be. Bye, guys.